Hey guys, what's up? This is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. Today I am um, trying to catch up on some work that I have been uh, not slacking on. It's just really busy time of the year and that's uh, why you don't see too many videos popping up on my channel because literally the entire time I'm in the lab I have to do work. If I do videos, I don't have time to do work. And uh, right now guys, the priorities have to come first. And um, I thought today like I don't have time to plan the case, cut it, edit it, uh, encode it, post it up. I'm just gonna do um, a bulk video. I have three drives. All three drives are gonna have to go through uh, physical repair. What is physical repair? Physical repair is when your drive is not responding at all due to failed components, either on the exter exterior of the device or interior of the device. The interior of the device would entail either the bearing assembly or the head assembly. So uh, all three of these units require head replacements. So the head assemblies are either weak on them or they're non-functional at all. Unit now requires head replacement. Obviously it's a much more expensive process, even for the simple fact that it will require a fully functional drive to be taken apart in order to fix this. Second drive is a Western Digital 750. This unit still is, is still active. It still runs and it gives proper ID and it can read but it reads really, really slow. If I had to set it up on the imaging task, it will probably take months. And it makes no sense because most likely uh, the uh, quality of the image will not be complete. Quality of the image will be really poor. And that will reflect on how good the integrity of the data is. Uh, not to say even that I can't even access um, the file structure at this point. So chances are this drive is not gonna get any better on its own until the heads are replaced, and that's uh, exactly what I'm gonna do, especially that I have a donor for it. So I just, it just makes sense to replace them, as opposed to keep f f harming this drive and keep forcing it to work when it simply doesn't wanna work. Uh, this unit is from a client who actually drove down from a neighboring city. He wanted to stick around for the recovery process, but once I found out that this is not a simple imaging case and it requires a head replacement uh, by putting a status scope on it and listening to what the heads are doing, I told them to go home and we'll uh, handle the case and once the data is recovered I'll just ship the unit back with the recovered data on external drive. So uh, three drives guys, I'm gonna do all three of them and uh, I'm expecting um, good results on all three of them hopefully. So far I think the biggest uh, challenge will be with this HGST uh, unit um, based on uh, Based on how this drive performs, I don't think I'm going to have any issues. And based on the story that I was told about the Passport, I also don't think we're going to have any issues. If you guys want to watch other videos regarding data recovery off of Passport drives, I shot a couple of them on my channel. So just click on the channel, then videos, and then it'll take you to a bunch of videos that we have on our channel. And uh, find, find ones that are about Passports. But I've said it multiple times, these drives have... Uh, proprietary USB 3.0 interface on them. And in order to work with them properly, I always adapt them to a SATA interface like this drive has. Okay, that can be done either by using a compatible um, SATA version of the board or to actually hardwire um, a connector for the SATA by disabling uh, the USB bridge at the same time. I do have donor boards for it, so I'm, I don't have to wire anything anymore. Uh, we're past that point, so I'm gonna start with this 750. I'm gonna get a head swap done on that. When after that, I'm quickly gonna hop on this uh, two terabyte drive, do a head swap on that, and I will set both these drives on the imaging task, so you guys can see that the process actually works and that we got someone with it. And then we'll deal with this HGST, and hopefully, if uh, we're having a good day. I'll be able to get them to work. So enjoy the show guys. I'm actually super excited to find out. Maybe you can't say by my impression, but I'm just super tired today. Um, ex extremely, extremely <laughs> uh, excited about finding out how this is going to turn out. Um, three jobs in a row. I'm not going to, I'm going to try to film as much of the process as possible. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, and fingers crossed we're gonna see three successful recoveries. I'll begin by removing the head assembly from a 750 and then removing the head assembly from one using the head assembly from one in the 750.
750 that we were recovering previously it's gonna go on uh, channel 0 battery is flashing but it's almost dead so I have to hurry up the target is gonna be channel 3 0 and 3 so 0 comes up ready right away I'm gonna go into vendor specific utility so we can begin building a head map but before I start imaging that I want to check what the um, Relo list looks like and that's the sector uh, that's the module number 32 uh, it's empty we're good to proceed with an image I'm gonna start imaging from like 10% of the drive and I'm just gonna do a quick head test so it starts with head one so head one is reading, head two is reading, head three is reading, head zero is not reading. Okay, so there is a problem at the beginning of the drive um, that makes the sectors inaccessible. So uh, best case and um, best, best way to deal with it is find a spot on the drive from which sector going forward the drive is comfortable with reading because it seems like there's a, um, there's a media damage at the beginning of the drive that could have been done by many things. And uh, start imaging from that point going forward. Then isolate that area uh, that has, that's got uh, problems with it uh, and leave it till the very, very end. So uh, starting 10 million and moving forward to um, 1.5 billion sectors, we're gonna image this drive perfectly fine because right now, it's keeping its speed up and it's moving along very well. For those who are wondering what this gel stuff is, I get asked about it almost in every single video. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy this, but this is a paste flux. Um, ex excellent stuff for soldering. It uh, really helps a lot with this process. So this is the uh, chip that we're going to be removing in order to adopt uh, the SATA board to work with that hard drive.
that's it. Channel number two, I'm gonna start it up. The drive spins up, stays busy, but finally gives us ready signal. Auto detect the family. Uh, the family of this drive is Shrek LT. Check the vital parts of this drive. I don't think the um, module 32 is going to be overfilled because if uh, the heads were stuck it should be pretty empty and it is it is empty pretty much all the way throughout uh, so I'm actually only interested in one more part and that's figuring out whether or not there is any encryption on it and uh, MBR sector 0 shows that there is no encryption on this drive so it's basically good to go and proceed with imaging so let's uh, open up data extractor build a head map first thing is what we always do so we'll take a little while but once it uh, reaches all the way to the end we will know exactly which heads um, belong to which sectors so if we see that the drive is slowing down on certain parts uh, consistently throughout the same head number then that means that there is most likely either a problem with the surface on that disk or there is a problem with that head. The head assembly that's in there had been tested previously. It's coming out of the fully functional drive. So I don't suppose there's going to be any issues regarding the head assembly. And it's finished. So now we know which sectors belong to which heads. So going into a file um, explorer view and select the partition, there's only one partition, it's NTFS, Windows based partition. Same as always, building a map of MFT record. Scanning it. Very small parts, only 13 megabytes. So I'm hoping there's not much, um, not many files on there. It may take up a lot of space if the files are big, but So right now scanning uh, the MFT record, creating the uh, virtual boot. And here we go. So we got uh, several subfolders up here. I'm just going to select everything that had been created by uh, my client. And there's only three folders here. So building a map of that selection will show us how much space is taking on the disk, which uh, will roughly give us an estimate of how much time we're going to have to spend spend imaging it so there's only 64 gigabytes of data in the selection probably gonna say it's gonna take about 20 minutes to an hour to image and as you guys can see it's reading almost as good as new well maybe I jumped the gun on that head 3 is slower but nonetheless it's reading without any skips and errors and most likely uh, that pause there was related to uh, just something that is on the disk uh, of uh, head 3 surface.
might load it up in the utility. Let's try and see if uh, this drive has ability to read. I want to read sector zero. Right there. That's sector zero, sector one, and so on and so forth. So now I switch back to uh, the uh, task view, go into uh, explorer view, and we can see that this drive has three partitions on it. I'm pretty stoked about the outcome. As you guys could see, well, for those who understand these concept, concepts a little bit, and to those uh, to whom whatever I've just done in this video makes sense, uh, you can see that all three drives got recovered. Uh, really, I really did get lucky with, uh, with the HGSC because the information um, was really compact. It didn't require uh, a lot of time. And um, it was easy enough to do with what I had at, at, uh, at my own disposal. Uh, otherwise, we would have to order up a donor that's close match. Usually, that would add up to about 200 bucks additionally if we bought it from donor drives or something like that. Um, passports, I've done so many of them that I've lost count uh, of how many of them we've received, so it's never an issue to get any information from them. Uh, the 750, I'm also pretty confident um, the architecture of that drive is very similar to uh, what passports uh, come loaded with, so it wasn't, wasn't a big deal as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. It showed a lot of um, technical stuff, but uh, and maybe some of the stuff doesn't necessarily make sense. But uh, um, for it to make sense, you really need to have access to the tools that I'm using. There is really no way for me to make more sense of what I'm doing if you don't have the same tools, if you don't apply the same techniques. It's kind of like trying to explain how to uh, fix a car if you don't even have the car to fix and if you don't have the tools to fix you know what I'm saying so hopefully some of you will get interested enough in this topic to actually take that leap of faith and purchase something uh, to begin uh, your journey in data recovery uh, industry for any uh, inquiries about your own hard drives that need assistance, that need data retrieval, uh, in a description of this video, there's going to be a contact information. You can just either call us or click on the link and it'll take you to our website where you request the service. Um, thank you very much for watching, liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. I check every buddies comments all the time and if I have time I answer it uh, if I didn't answer you yet that means I'm gonna get to it eventually I uh, thank you guys for taking the time uh, to watch this uh, show and I will see you in the next episode later mm -hmm.